Andy stood across the street from the only gay bar in town. His heart raced as he imagined what he'd find inside. This was not only Andy's first time in a bar, but also the first time he'd ever publicly revealed his desires. What's going on in there? How will they treat me? Will they find me attractive? Will I find them attractive? He wondered. His heart beat rapidly in his chest, mostly from exhilaration, but partially out of fear. Could he summon the courage to take the first steps toward the door? Would he be able to enter the club? Who remembers their first time? I know I do. It's a very special and wonderful occasion, if you're lucky. Hi, this is Stevie's Stories, written by JC Calciano, and I'm your host, Mark Montgomery. And I'm here today to tell you a tale about Andy and Sam, two teens who are about to share their first experiences together. It's going to be a hot one. So, sit back, get comfy, and join me as we remember what it was like to be young, innocent, and somewhat naive, because we are about to embark on a journey of sexual discovery in this month's Steamy Stories. Bathed in the golden hues of the setting sun, the neon sign of a quaint gay bar named The Rainbow's End flickered casting playful, multicolored patterns on the pavement. Andy, who, with his boy-next-door charm, could incite flutters with a bashful smile, stood quietly at a distance, watching patrons enter and exit the bar. Tonight, however, his usual sparkle was slightly dimmed by a wave of serious thoughts. Standing a mere fifty feet across the street from a lively gay bar, Andy tried to muster the courage to step into the vibrant establishment. Until now, he had always kept this part of himself hidden. Tonight, he decided, would be the night he socializes with men his own age, men who shared his interests. No more imagining what the inside of a gay bar was like, or fantasizing about the fit, fantastic men reveling within. This evening, he'd finally engage with the community he now recognized as his family and summon the courage to accept himself as he was and what his life would soon be, a life he had concealed from family and friends for years. He yearned to savor the freedom that the patrons within must be experiencing, but fear held him rooted firmly in place. The universe seemed to be weaving a romantic symphony around him, a flirty dance of possibilities and love for everyone. At the same time, Andy found himself alone, an outsider peering into a modest bar. But so far this evening, Andy had circled the block more times than he could count, hoping that with each lap, he'd find the nerve to walk through the door. He'd passed this bar a hundred times before, always dreaming of the day he would finally step inside. All he had to do now was cross the street and open the door to a new world. It was as daunting as it was exhilarating. This was a place Andy knew he had to venture into to embark on the most important journey of his life. A flutter of nervous excitement in his stomach signaled an undercurrent of anticipation. He knew this night could alter his life if he were brave enough to take the first step. All he had to do was cross the street and open the door to a new world. And so again, there he stood, his heart pounding a fervent rhythm against the silence of his apprehension, torn between going inside or wondering if just one more lap around the block would afford him the courage to enter. I'll just take one more quick stroll around the block, and then I promise to march right in. No hesitation. Once and for all, nothing will deter me this time. As he was about to set off on another round of his habitual hesitation-fueled promenade around the block, his gaze landed on something, or rather, someone across the street. Illuminated by the soft glow of a street lamp, 
a young man stood alone, reflecting Andy's own anxious anticipation. He was of a similar age, radiating an allure that struck a resonant chord in Andy's heart. His eyes were wide and filled with a tender uncertainty that Andy understood all too well. A spark of curiosity flickered within Andy. Here was someone seemingly caught in the same storm of emotions, ensnared in the same dance of fear and longing. An almost magnetic connection tugged at Andy's heart, as though the universe had orchestrated this serendipitous encounter, offering him a lifeline in the form of this intriguing stranger. Guided by this newfound bond, Andy decided to bridge the gap, to reach out to this young man who seemed so similar. Emboldened by his resolve to lend support, he wondered, Perhaps I could help him feel more at ease with his insecurities, his fear. If he's anything like me, I'm sure he'd appreciate knowing he's not alone. Setting aside his own needs, Andy focused solely on providing comfort and refuge to another young man, wrestling with the same insecurities he had. His heart pounded a fervent rhythm as he began to approach the stranger. The anxiety that had been a relentless barrier now morphed into thrilling anticipation, infusing the night with a charged energy. As Andy crossed the street, his only thought was to extend kindness to this kindred spirit, to comfort him and soothe the fears that mirrored his own. As he approached, he could see that the young man, roughly his age, was attractively awkward in a charming, nerdy way. He had clearly aimed for a dress-to-impress style, but missed the mark in an endearingly clumsy fashion. His ensemble was a mismatched blend of skater-style baggy jeans and a slightly too tight shirt that looked like something worn to a fraternity rush. His thick, lush hair was awkwardly slipped back in an attempt at hipness, an endearing contrast to his fresh face, struggling to sport a manly scruff intended to make him appear older. Andy couldn't help but chuckle at the sight of him, finding his unconventional style both adorable and tantalizingly sexy. He's certainly not stereotypical, Andy laughed quietly, as he found his heart beating faster as he approached the bashful boy. As he stepped out of his comfort zone, Andy mustered the courage to initiate a conversation. His heart is a flutter as he opened his mouth to speak, breaking the comfortable silence of the starlit night. Hello, he softly stated, his voice carrying the sweet charm of hesitant bravery. I noticed you standing here alone. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? The young man spoke softly at first as he glanced downward, avoiding eye contact. Yeah, it's nice out tonight. I was just out for a walk, heading nowhere in particular. He replied as he then timidly looked up. His large, inviting blue eyes met Andy's as his face revealed a nervous, understanding smile. Andy involuntarily let out a silent gasp. Oh, damn, the boy is hot. I figured he was cute, but those eyes, lips, wow. Andy's intention was not to flirt with the handsome young man, but more to comfort him and offer him friendship. Since it was evident they were both struggling with the same fears and insecurity about entering a gay bar, Andy softly admitted, I must have walked around the block a dozen times, hoping to gather the courage to walk into that bar. Funny as it may seem, I just can't get myself to go in. Silly, isn't it? I've never been in a gay bar before, have you? Sam's face beamed revealing not only the release of his own secret fears, but also in the recognition that he is not alone in his struggle. <laughs> right? Me too. I wasn't going to confess to it, but I was totally freaking out about going in. 
I've also passed this place a dozen times, but couldn't get myself to pop in for a brew. A well-deserved laugh was shared between the two men, as Andy added, I'm so glad to know I'm not alone. I was starting to think I was a freak. The young man quickly added, You're certainly not a freak, but if you are, then so am I. Glad to meet you. I'm Sam. Well, since we're both in the same boat, it seems neither of us is alone anymore. Should we muster the courage together and enter? Sam, not so subtly, gave Andy a thorough once-over. Andy smirked at Sam's lack of finesse. It was clear that Sam had quickly recovered from his shyness when he stated, uh, You know, I have to say, I'm not really in the mood for a beer right now, and the thought of yelling over loud music doesn't appeal to me at the moment. How about we grab a cup of coffee instead? There's a great little cafe around the corner. Care to join me? The first cup's on me. Sam's face brightened at the proposition, his lips curling into a warm smile. I'd like that. I wasn't in the mood for a cocktail, anyway, he responded. What started as a night of fear and apprehension had now turned into a delightful detour. The shared journey to a cozy cafe promised a positive shift in the evening. That was, until they reached the cafe, only to find the intimate establishment was dark and closed for the evening. Andy's heart sank at the sight of the See You Tomorrow sign in the window. It was evident that Sam felt the same way. Each of them wondered silently what to do next. The evening was still young, and both men had already expressed their disinterest in the bar scene. Sam immediately said, uh, My parents are cool with me having company over. They'll be in the living room watching TV. I've taken over the basement. If you'd like, we could hang out at my place. I know it's lame, but it's an idea. Andy tried to appear as nonchalant as possible as he observed Sam, trying to gauge his intentions. Despite Sam's casual attire, Andy couldn't deny his attractiveness. Andy wondered, Is it a good idea to go home with a guy I just met? I don't really know him. Sam's innocent smile, sweet eyes, and lean muscular physique were too appealing to resist. Plus, the fact that his parents would be in the living room seemed reassuring. It was going to be okay. Uh, sure, I can come by for a bit. I'd like to get to know you better, so let's do it, Andy said. Sam enthusiastically guided him down the street. I'm just two blocks over. Upon entering Sam's parents' modest home, Sam called out to his parents, who were engrossed in the latest Julia Roberts film. I'm home. I'm here with a friend. We'll be in my room. We're going to hang out for a bit. Andy observed Sam with fascination as he confidently navigated his familiar surroundings. He lived in a modest, traditional, split-level home brimming with family photos, homemade crafts, and comfortable furniture. Andy couldn't help but notice the striking similarity to his own parents' house. This realization brought him comfort. Sam's parents briefly turned and waved a welcome, their eyes sparkling with curiosity. They didn't ask any questions, simply returning their attention to the movie, lovingly acknowledging their son's return. Their easy acceptance was a quiet relief to Andy, who began to relax in the casual and accepting atmosphere of the home. The basement was a cozy den, filled with posters of Sam's favorite bands, a shelf brimming with books, a computer desk, skater paraphernalia, and a large screen TV. The space radiated warmth, just like Sam himself. A few action figures from popular comic book heroes stood on a corner shelf, adding a touch of Sam's quirky style. With the barriers of the outside world momentarily forgotten, Andy found himself enjoying the company of the charismatic young man. 
His initial fears about the evening seemed to be evaporating. Replaced by an intimate connection he hadn't anticipated. Sam excused himself momentarily to fetch them both a drink from the kitchen, leaving Andy alone to take in the surroundings. As he looked around, he noticed a picture frame on a small table. It held a picture of Sam, younger, his arms wrapped around what appeared to be his parents. Their smiles were warm and welcoming, mirroring the same warmth Andy had felt since entering the house. Sam returned with drinks and handed one to Andy. Sam plunked down on the edge of his bed nonchalantly, gesturing for Andy to join him. Here, take a seat. Since there was an absence of other options, Andy joined him. The two young men sat awkwardly on the bed, each silently hoping the other would be the first to speak. However, neither of them uttered a word. Then, like a siren piercing a painfully quiet night, Sam broke the silence. His eyes held a hint of lightness as a slight quiver crept into his voice. Andy? He began, his voice barely above a whisper. Have you ever been kissed by a man? His simple yet profound question sent a ripple through Andy's heart. A surprised expression washed over Andy's face, his eyes widening. It was a moment that stretched out like a sweetly drawn-out note from an epic concerto. He breathed deeply and timidly shook his head. No. Andy's heart now drummed in his chest. Anticipation and nervous excitement filled him. With the quiet courage that had become his companion through the night, he finally voiced the desire rustling in his heart. Would you... He started, then paused to breathe. His gaze remained firmly on Sam's. Would you like to be my first? His question hung in the air, their heartbeats echoing in the uncomfortable silence of the room. It was a moment where fear intertwined with hope, uncertainty melded with desire, and the sweetness of a potential first kiss loomed on the horizon. The universe seemed to hold its breath, awaiting Sam's response. The moment stretched on impossibly long, teetering on the edge of anticipation. Sam's eyes sparkled with surprise, then consideration, and finally, acceptance. His lips parted to release a whisper that breathed life into their shared hopes. Uh, okay. Slowly, hesitantly, as if not wanting to shatter the delicate beauty of the moment, Andy leaned in. He was close enough to catch the faint scent of Sam's cologne, a subtle, spicy aroma that made his pulse quicken. The two young men were so close that their breaths intermingled in the small distance separating them. Then, with a gentleness that made Sam's breath quiver, Andy pressed his lips against Sam's. It was a sweet, simple kiss, a delicate brush of lips that sent warmth flooding through him. The world seemed to spin on a different axis as they shared their first intimate moment together, a moment amplified by the feverish beating of their hearts. Andy pulled back slightly, his eyes fluttering open to meet Sam's gaze. In the soft cellar light, his eyes shone with tender understanding a silent promise echoing through their shared gaze. This was a significant milestone, their first shared kiss marking the beginning of an intimate journey together. Bashfully, Sam looked down at the floor, his cheeks flushing as he murmured, Wow, that was nice. You're really good at this. Andy modestly chuckled. I don't think so. It's my first time. I don't know if I did it right, but with your permission, I'd like to try it again 
and see if I can do it better. Sam met Andy's gaze, a playful wink in his eyes. Yeah, maybe you do need a bit more practice. Uh, Let's give it another go and see if you improve. Taking Sam's hand, Andy leaned in closer. The two boys closed their eyes, and once again, their lips met. This time, Andy's mouth wasn't tightly shut as before. Instead, it was slightly open, as if he wanted to savor as much of Sam as possible. Sam seemed to instinctually understand Andy's intention, clearly sharing the same desire. His mouth moved in sync with Andy's as they found a perfect harmony between them. Sam's hand found its way to the back of Andy's head, ensuring that the pressure between their mouths was strong and powerful. Time seemed to stand still for both of them, lost in a kiss they wished would never end. Finally, they separated. Sam sheepishly looked around the bedroom, wondering if anyone had entered while they weren't paying attention. Nope, still alone, still just us. Andy couldn't help but notice the discomfort now binding him below the waist. Ah, damn these skinny jeans. His excitement had gotten the best of him, putting his manhood in a tight spot, Dare he adjust himself? Would it be too obvious or awkward? As Andy's male member battled against the snug denim, eager to be released from its cotton constraints, Sam couldn't help but laugh, sympathetically. (laughs) Need to adjust yourself? Me too. I didn't expect to be so turned on, he confessed. Clearly, they were both suffering from the same affliction. Sharing a laugh, they both reached into the front of their jeans, making whatever adjustments needed to be made to continue their evening comfortably. Then, in a swift move, Sam reached over his head and grabbed the collar of his shirt. With one fell swoop, he lifted it off and tossed it to the side of the room. As Andy suspected... Sam's hairless, trim body was tight and sculpted. There wasn't an ounce of body fat on the young skater. Genetics had been kind to him. He fought to catch his breath as Sam eagerly reached over and took hold of Andy's shirt. Mind if I unbutton this? He asked nervously, hoping desperately the answer would be affirmative. Andy couldn't utter a word too choked up to speak. Instead, he nodded, signaling to Sam that he was okay with him removing his shirt. Slowly, with remarkable restraint, Sam unfastened Andy's shirt, button by button. Once the top three buttons were undone, he reached inside Andy's shirt and ran the back of his hand along his chest. Unknowingly, or knowingly, Sam brushed Andy's nipple. A shiver shot down Andy's spine as he could feel himself readying to explode. Once again, Sam leaned in for a kiss. The silky soft, warm touch against Andy's mouth made his head spin. Suddenly, he felt dizzy. What's happening to me? He wondered. Is it because my blood is rushing elsewhere? Don't pass out. Don't pass out. Andy silently urged himself, hoping not to let this moment be interrupted. Sam! A pleasant but firm voice called from the top of the stairs, punctuated by a knock on the door. Your father and I are going to bed. It might be time for your friend to go home. Andy wasn't sure if what he felt was profound disappointment or relief at the sound of Sam's mother beckoning his return to his senses. Okay, Mom, be right up, Sam answered sweetly, quickly buttoning Andy's shirt. I'm so sorry, Sam whispered. You're going to have to leave. He swiftly got off the couch to retrieve his own shirt and slipped it over his head. I totally get it. 
No worries. Andy quickly assured as he continued. My folks aren't cool with having people they don't know over when they're not home. <laughs> Thanks for being cool. Sam smiled, giving a mischievous wink. The next few minutes were a blur as Sam and Andy dashed up the stairs and out of the basement, swiftly navigating past his parents and to the front door. On the front porch, Sam quietly stated, Tonight was fun. I really enjoyed it. Can I have your cell number? Maybe call you sometime? Without hesitation, Andy recited it to him, ensuring he articulated each digit to avoid any risk of confusion. Awesome. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Good night. Sam quickly planted a surprise kiss on Andy's lips and retreated behind the front door. Shocked, surprised, and excited by the whirlwind of events, Andy knew one thing for sure. It was time for him to head home. Walking towards his parents' house, Andy felt he had conquered the evening and his biggest fear. As he confidently strolled down the street with his head high and a mischievous smile, his phone buzzed, interrupting his thoughts and self-assured stride. It was a text from Sam that simply read, Thanks again for tonight. See you again soon? Andy's fingers flew over his screen to reply immediately, Sure, as a goofy smirk appeared on his face. A follow-up message from Sam arrived. Thank you for being my first kiss. I'm glad I was yours too. Maybe on our next date, we could be each other's first something else. Andy's heart pounded with excitement. Swiftly, he replied with a heart emoji and several thumbs up symbols. Ah, young love. I hope that reminded you of your first kiss. I know it did mine. Hmm, I wonder, whatever did become of that Cirque du Soleil performer I met behind the big top as a teenager? That boy could easily fold himself up like a pretzel. Now he gave me a performance to remember that night. Well, maybe one day I'll share that steamy story with you. But for now, Steamy Stories is written by J.C. Calciano and narrated by me, Mark Montgomery. I certainly hope you join us again next month when I tell you another steamy story. Later, bro.